Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Dr. Garayas. And uh, this is a quick review over um, uh, chapter 17. I have a whole lecture, but I don't think that's what you guys need. I think you need a summary, which is a little bit quicker and um, a little bit Bit of better for you. So let's open up chapter 17. Okay, and then let's go over this and let me start um, uh, going over uh, some of the items which I feel are uh, pertinent. Now, this won't be a re lecture, it'll just just like last time when we had to review, I'm going to go over certain things, uh, certain things that I like. So, of course, the definition of digestion, because that's the purpose of this all, and mechanical versus chemical. That's right off the bat. The process as well, right down here, uh, and it starts with ingestion and propulsion, which is the movement, absorption, and defecation. And of course, defecation is the um, creation of feces. Uh, elementary canal, uh, nice to know, nice to know. This slide, big time. That's slide number five. Right, and you know what? Uh, I'm going to do what I also did for you guys before. Oh, no, well, you, you got the video, so you know uh, which slides. I don't want to start deleting slides, and it's going to start messing up the, the order. So when you're looking at this one, especially focus on the accessory organs here. This is a lovely matching here, and it has the the, the anatomy and also the function. And um, this alimentary canal, also known as the gastrointestinal tract. Yeah, of course, you definitely need to know this, but this is a nice little side, side question right here. All right, so accessory organs, let's, let's draw a box around that. Um, next one, of course, must know uh, the layers, and this is how it goes. This is the outside, outermost, and then it's going to go what? Inside, this direction. And what's key? Um, uh, uh, da, 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 da. Of course, lots of folds, um, especially your plica circularis and your small intestine. But um, I want you to think submucosa, nourishment, so that's what arteries and veins. Uh, muscularis is the middle part, so of course that's muscle. And, then, and of course, know your serosa, which is a visceral versus parietal, okay? And that's the outermost layer. So you have, of course, visceral, right? And remember, the viscerous fluid, its function is to decrease friction. It doesn't really eliminate it, but it, 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 it decreases. And regarding mucosa, sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place. Mucosa, I want you to think goblet cells. Um, so post mucus, highlight this. And then write the word goblet cells. Okay. And that's slide number seven. There's a, um, um, a visualization over here. And oh, this is great that I have. Um, uh, this green marker going on here. It's more small. Remember the lacteals. Remember the green. It's part of your um, immune system, and it's going to take away all that excess fat. Remember the goblet cells. Follow that green as well. Uh, mixing versus propelling. Remember propelling. Peristalsis. He goes, both of these must be rhythmic, right? 
wave like, rhythmic, reverse peristalsis, this vomiting, lovely picture here in the second one. Mastication, mechanical. Okay. So chewing. Uh, know your tonsils versus your uvula versus your hard palate versus your soft palate. Uh, lips, tongue, uh, and remember the tongue is also part of uh, mastic. Well, not part of mastication, but also part of the mechanical breakdown of food. Uh, remember your tonsils that, uh, well, there's a summary one better one. Here it goes. Palatal, pharyngeal, there's, there's a summary one. Here we go. Palatal, lingual, right? All of these and Let's call the red yellow. The pharyngeal tonsils, palatine tonsils, lingual tonsils. Remember tonsils, I want you to think immune. Uh, other things you need to know, of course, larynx is your voice box, trachea is your um, uh, windpipe. Larynx, trachea, esophagus, that's your food tube. It's back here, posterior. Trachea are the C-shaped cartilaginous rings. Here, right here, very important. That's your epiglottis. Okay. Tongue, of course, hard palate, soft palate, nasal, nasal pharynx, oral pharynx, and of course, it is uh, pharynx going to your larynx here. And your larynx, of course, is your voice box. Teeth, and not because for my lecture, I'm not really into teeth. But I'm into this. The three glands, parotid, submandibular, sublingual, and think saliva. So when you're looking at the first one, it's serous, saliva, and amylase. And remember, amylase uh, is the enzyme that breaks down carbohydrates. It breaks down polysaccharides or carbohydrates to disaccharides, right? A little bit more simpler sugar. And it starts when you start chewing. And then the submandibular is, of course, Serious fluid, but now it's got mucus. And then the sublingual, there's all mucus. Okay, so you can see how it transitions out of different substances. Um, you get this. Uh, this is nice to know. Of course, pharynx, your throat, your naso, oral, laryngo, naso, your nose, oral, your mouth, like this part. Right? So your nose and your turbinates were up here. Oropharynx is here, and then of course your laryngopharynx at the level of the cartilage right here, and that is your voice box. The lar larynx is your voice box. Um, what do you need to know about uh, swallowing? The divisions. First stage, it's voluntary. The second stage and third stage, they are involuntary. Right? And, it goes, and it requires what? A reflex. I mean, voluntary things require a brain. Remember what food is now called after, once it goes into the esophagus, it's no longer food, it is called a bolus. And uh, second stage, I want you to think, um, uh, you know, everything that happens in the oropharynx, um, um, but the big thing is epiglottis has to close the top off of the larynx. Its function is to protect the trachea by not letting any food or drink get in there. And the last stage is pure peristalsis. And I want you to think already, level of the esophagus. Here's a nice little picture. Here are the words. Voluntary is the first part, involuntary the second and third part. The third part definitely is peristalsis going into uh, going through your esophagus. Esophagus, what do you need to know? This part right here. Is your lower esophageal sphincter, right? That's this, also known as your cardiac sphincter. Okay, it closes off so all the acid doesn't go back into the esophagus. This blue tube here is your esophagus, and this is your stomach right here. And the, um, the circular uh, ring of muscle here is called the sphincter, hence the lower esophageal sphincter, or your LES, also known as your cardiac sphincter. Now 
here, let's draw it in. Let's uh, color it uh, something L. Lavender. Now here, this area right here. Should have colored it a little bit. But this area right here, of course. I want you to think um, um, this is this is your lower esophageal sphincter because this is um, the esophagus and the lower part of the esophagus or the food tube. There's a sphincter here, also known as your cardiac sphincter. The sphincter here is your pyloric sphincter. And the folds here are called rugae. The so rugae fold. Uh, um, let's write the word pyloric. That's right here. That's your pyloric sphincter. And this, of course, is your LES or upper um, or your cardiac center, lower esophageal center or uh, cardiac center. And this here is your pyloric center. The rugae, the folds. Yeah, nice to know the different parts up here. This is the fundus. Here is the cardiac. The main part is called the body or corpus. And the end part is called your pylorus. Hence the name for this sphincter down here, pyloric sphincter. This is the cardia, hence the name for the lower esophageal sphincter right here is your cardiac sphincter. And you can see the muscle is essentially a bunch of lay, I mean the stomach is essentially a bunch of layered muscles. Big time. Let's, uh, let's make this red. Gas executions. This is big time. All of Uh, no regulation, parasympathetic versus sympathetic, no uh, their effect on GI. And remember, sympathetic nervous system, think heart, cardiovascular. Um, but parasympathetic, you're thinking gastrointestinal, you're thinking GI. You know this hormonal regulation, this is really good too. So I'm going to statin, gastrin, and CTK, which is cholecystokine. You know what these things do. Uh, vomiting center is in the medulla oblongata along with your cardiac item. This is also sometimes called your chemotaxic zone, also known as your CTZ. Pancreatic juice, you know, you gotta know, gotta know what all these things do. And remember, check this out. Goes, uh, in order, it goes in order for trypsin to break down proteins. Trypsinogen then turns into what? Trypsin. And then trypsin then activates chymotrypsin. Right? Uh, and also, then also at the same time activates carboxypeptidase. So you can see it's like a cascade of proteinases or things that are going to eat or break down protein. So that's trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxypeptidase. And also know uh, the function of bicarbonate ions released by your pancreas. It's the way, it, because remember, it's coming out of stomach. Uh, so the bicarbonate will make the pancreatic juice alkaline because it has to be, it's going to be exposed to some of the acid from the stomach since all of this is going to meet in the first part of the small intestine, which is your duodenum. Liver's got lobes, nice, but this, definitely know this. The whole thing. Let me put red. All good. Wow. Okay. Um, bile salts, bile pigment, know what bile is. Let's call that green. Right? It's a fat emulsifier. It breaks down fat, not chemically, but just physically, into 
from um, big flat, big fat globules to my cells. We drew that on the board yesterday. And these pigments are derived from hemoglobin, of course, bilirubin, biliverdin, bilirubin for urine, biliverdin for uh, feces. Gallbladder is located in the inferior surface of your uh, liver, and your liver is located in the right upper quadrant. Light paste, fat soluble vitamins, is good to know. Uh, emulsifier, you can know what it is. It's what? Turning fat globules into smaller droplets. It doesn't do anything, and that's why it's called a detergent. Small intestine. Remember, uh, you have uh, from your pyloric sphincter that starts it all. You also the beginning of the large intestine, uh, and that's the ileocecal valve. So I'm going to go large intestine. Pyloric sphincter is the thing that starts it, and talk about large connected to the large intestine. It connects to the ileum, which is the last part of your small intestine. So it is the ileo. And cecum is the first part of the large intestine, so that's cecal. That's a C. So ileocecal valve in between your large and small intestine, because the last part of your small intestine is your ileum, thing here, and the first part of your large intestine is your cecal. Plique circulares, that's very good to know. Think small intestine. Uh, Lucas, peptidases, good to know. Sucrase, maltase, and uh, lactase, those are all disaccharides that break down. And when you break down these disaccharides, you make the monosaccharide or single sugar called glucose, six carbon single sugar. Uh, fat digestions, enzymes, that's nice to know. Fatty acids absorbed, micelles, we already talked about. Micelles can even break down even further. The stuff called chylomicrons. Um, large intestine, think water absorption. Okay. Water, not sure. Not so, a lot. It recycles everything. Um, you can see here, this is your appendix right here, your cecum, right? And this is the last part, the ileum this is the last part of your small intestine. Now your small intestine is smaller, but it's in diameter, but it's longer. The large intestine, you see it's large in diameter, but it's shorter. You have your ascending, transverse, descending, and this one right here looks like an S, that's your sigmoid. And the last one is your, the last two is you call your rectum, and it ends in the anus. The anal sphincters, you have two of them, one internal, which is under autonomic control, and one external, which you yourself control if you are confident. Tinea coli, that's this thing. Um, this thing here, see these little out pocketing, out pocketings, and then um, it's got this band of connective tissue that goes around uh, your large intestine. Uh, that is called your tinea coli. Ooh, well, what is good about large intestine? Excuse me. So large intestine, I want you to think as haustra or these pouches or pockets that form the feces. And you have tinea coli, which is um, it's 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 connective tissue and uh, bands of muscles. I forgot to mention that it was um, muscular bands, but there's also a lot of connective tissue in it. Goblet cells, mucus, intestinal flora is normal bacteria that's supposed to be living there. Um, we produce things like cellulose and uh, I'll break down things like cellulose and potassium and B12 and thiamine. Oh, 
Defecation reflex, we talked about it uh, briefly. Briefly, when did I get in this? Um, that's when, you know, um, the feces starts getting a lot. So this starts getting distended. So um, all the uh, autonomic nervous system there senses that it's getting distended. So what will happen? You will uh, loosen up the lower esophageal, not the lower, the lower uh, sphincters, and internal and external anal sphincters, and then you will defecate. And of course, it comes in waves. Water, electrolyte, mucus, bacteria, and bile pigments. We talked all about all of this. And changes, you know. So that concludes my quick review. And, um, you know, pause the video if you want to, like, copy the highlights of uh, the slide. All right, with that said, uh, thanks for joining me, and I'll see you in lab.